to people who would rather perpetrate fraud overseas, jobs I'm happy to lose. Joining us now from Capitol Hill, New York Democratic Congressman Maurice Hinchy. He's a member of the House Appropriations Committee. Uh, my biggest concern uh, on this one, Representative, is that you've got uh, very well-educated bankers with very complicated systems, uh, a very simple solution, which is transparency and accountability, uh, and, a, and a Washington, D.C. that doesn't seem to have the guts to demand uh, that everything be done in public with public money. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. Frankly, uh, I was very interested in the, in the description that you just gave. I was listening to you carefully, and I agree with everything that you said. The manipulation of this whole investment practice has been going on now for years. It began with the weakening of the Glass-Steagall Act and then the elimination of the Glass-Steagall Act back in 1999, and the manipulation of investments and the gross manipulation of those in investments, which has cost huge amounts of money to a large numbers of people. And uh, no one apparently who is responsible for that is interested in having anything change so that the oversight of the government can come back into play in an effective way. Yeah, I, 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 I guess what, what is, I, I don't understand, and maybe you can help me figure out how, how you get around this, so few people in our Congress, so few of the people that represent America understand these issues. So when they are facing a Goldman Sachs lobbyist saying, well, we won't make as much money if you force us to be transparent. And they, might, they say, my goodness, we wouldn't want you to not be able to make money, even if the way you're making money is picking off everybody else in the world. Yeah, How do you educate the, the Congress to, to, to not be suckered by these, these false arguments? Well, I appreciate what you're doing, because I think that that is helping do that kind of education. Not just education, but also the understanding, and beyond the understanding, acting upon that understanding. We have to realize that the circumstances that we're facing economically in the United States today is very similar to that which we faced back in 1928 and 1929. And Contrary to what happened in 1933, after all, it was a few years, we haven't gotten there yet. We haven't begun to do the kinds of things that are necessary to straighten this mess out and to bring back some oversight and supervision that is going to restrict people from engaging in con jobs and the manipulation of investment practices that are going to be disastrous to the working people, the blue and white collar working people of this country. And they're the ones that drive the gross domestic product, more than two-thirds of yeah. that GDP. I, I so that's what we've got to focus on. And I will add to that, in addition to the blue and white collar working people of this country, the entire investor class, anybody who puts money in a 401k and anybody who has actually legitimately created value, billionaires in this country who have built huge businesses that have created jobs uh, are affected hugely by those who, instead of trying to create value, would seek to manipulate Washington, D.C. so they can run financial scams. I don't understand why it is so hard for Washington, D.C. to say, listen, I understand understand that the banks make more money if they can trade and do business in secret. We get it. It's easier to make money if you operate in secret. Dark pools are more profitable than lit pools, like the New York Stock Exchange. I get it. But why is Washington saying our responsibility is not to ensure secret markets for investment banks, even though they're using our tax money to lobby against us right now? Our job is to demand transparency, push everything to exchanges, and demand capital requirements so that you can't run Ponzi schemes and frauds that get stuck at the Federal Reserve. Not everybody in Washington is saying the same thing, as you know. There are some of us down here who are understanding what the problem is, and we're trying to get it back into a situation where there will be oversight and regulation and end the manipulation of investment particularly. That kind of operation doesn't create jobs for a lot of people. It creates huge amounts of wealth for a few people. You've got about as much wealth in the hands of 1% of the population today as we had back in 1928 and 1929. You've got more wealth in the hands of 10% of the population today than we had back in 1928 and 1929. You've got more and more concentration of wealth in the hands of fewer and fewer people. More and more of the middle class is going down, down, down in, in the, circ the economic circumstances that they've got to confront. This Congress and this administration has got to wise up and face this situation in a, in a responsible way, in a way that is going to be adequate to get this mess straightened out. And, and again, if you, do, if you understand the most basic principles of democracy and markets, the, allowing a bank or any other financial institution to be more profitable by creating a law that allows them to do business in secret, when they are able to then take risk, 
that the taxpayer bears. The taxpayer just created two super banks with J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs, and they're. I mean, you you get the, the, the that whole list. Do we have anything representative in the way of a hearing? Is there any way that the that the that the U.S. taxpayer can get a hearing to find out a why it is all these secrets are being kept from the taxpayer, and b why all the taxpayer money was and continues to be delivered to these banks with no strings attached? Well, that's something that the Joint Economic Committee really should be doing. There needs to be a very closer examination of all of that process. There's going to be a hearing of the JEC coming up, I think it's tomorrow, actually, at about 10 o'clock in the morning. And some of that will be focused on this. But this is something that's got to be done much more focused, much more intentionally, and in a way that is going to reveal the circumstances much more clearly and generate the energy that is going to be needed to correct all of these problems. The Banking uh, Committee in the House of Representatives is going to be holding a, a hearing, I believe, uh, tomorrow, and I think that uh, the Federal Reserve Chairman, among others, may be uh, in, in that hearing. Yeah. So these are things that really need to be focused on, and they need to be focused on with a whole lot of attention and understanding, and the corrections have got to come forward. Do you think people understand that banks make more money when they can do business in secret? That that's why they're lobbying so hard to keep things off of exchanges in, in, in dark pools? Well, I think anybody that's seen the way in which this economy collapsed after the uh, repeal of the Glass-Steagall Act and the manipulation of the Glass-Steagall Act by the Federal Reserve primarily prior to its repeal in 1999 understands what's going on here, understands that as you give these big banks more secret operations, they can manipulate the investment policy much more effectively for them and consequently much more disastrous for the general economy. Exactly. And that general economy has been affecting here and also a number of other places around the world. Yeah. That's got to be corrected. Yeah. If you can, if representative, anything you can do to bring everything that happens with public money, taxpayer money, shareholder money into public and out of the back corners of dark pools and over-the-counter derivatives markets would be a, a hugely patriotic act for this country, sir. Yes, sir. I agree with you completely, and that's the main focus of my attention yeah. here. Yeah. We appreciate your efforts, and let me know anything I can do to help you uh, on those efforts. Uh, thank you, sir. I thank you for right. uh, everything that you said and for the opportunity to be with yeah. you. Thanks right. very much. I right. thank you. Contessa, what else is going on in All the All right, world? so Dylan, we're just looking at some unexpectedly <laughs>